Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our fourth webinar of this fall season. We are covering the Texas A&M University Master of International Policy and the DC degrees that we now offer um, up in our satellite new location. I'm not sure with the right terminology to use this, but it is our new um, DC opportunities that we have a guest speaker here with us. Uh, which Whitney Rains from their office is here to join us. So we're going to get started right now, generate some question for us. There is a chat section that you guys can type those in and we'll try to answer those as we move along. So presenting today is going to be myself, Catherine Meyer, uh, Director of Admissions and Recruitment here at the Bush School on the College Station campus. And we have Whitney Rains joining us from the Admissions at DC site. And then we've got a student coming in, Captain Shasha Ferguson, who's one of our one-year students in the uh, College Station campus, MIP. And she'll just give us some insights on the program um, at the end. So the agenda that we're going to cover today is covering the degree options that we have both here in College Station and in the DC uh, location. We've got academic coverings, the tracks, the concentrations, what the curriculum looks like for each of those programs. We'll talk about some student resources at each of those locations. The employment focus is probably a little more generic with our international affairs here in College Station, but it'll be relevant to all of the degree programs because the nature of where our students find themselves. We'll also cover the application process and the recent stats for the international affairs degrees the costs involved for those programs, and then again, the student perspective with Captain Shasha Ferguson here. So I'm gonna start with just this general slide I put on all of them and what is the Bush School of Government and Public Service. And we are a graduate school only at Texas A&M University here on the College Station campus. Now we've expanded out into DC. We've opened in 1997, so we have roughly 2,200 alumni. But those alumni from the Bush School are a small drop in the bucket compared to that A&M resources that you get for the alumni network, which is in excess of 500,000 people. So you get the benefits of a small school feel here at our location with all the resources associated with a major university um, that comes with that. So College Station, here we have four degrees. That's the Master of International Affairs, a Master of International Affairs, Master of Public Health combined degree, the Master of International Policy, which we cover today, and a Master of Public Service and Administration. There's also four graduate certificates and an online executive degree that we work within our online um, extended education office. There's an additional two certificates that we offer. One has to be done here on campus. The other one can be done um, I believe online, that's in cyber um, and geospatial intelligence. So those will be mentioned on other webinars. And then here in DC now, we've got uh, the MIP and a new degree, which is a Master of National Security and Intelligence. And then they've added the CAIA on their campus as well. And all the students, no matter what type of degree program they're coming in, they're preparing for a career in the nonprofits, the international NGOs, federal government in particularly, state, local government, maybe a little less so, lots on government contracting, depending on their push, private industry, same thing, think tanks, many more different options. But if any of this looks like what you hope to do with the career, then you are in the right place. So I'm going to start with the one. Uh, program that we hear that we're supposed to cover on this uh, slideshow here, and that's the executive level uh, Master of International Policy. And, and I say executive level because it requires four years of experience to be qualified for it. And that's four years of professional international exposure. Um, it's a one-year degree that get in and out in a typically fall, spring, and then a summer here on our campus. Um, but it's year round admissions. So we're open to taking students in any of those semesters. And then we modify that uh, according to their course load. Some students have even dropped back to do part time as needed. There is no internship requirement, no capstone, no foreign language. 
but there's also no Bush School scholarship here on our College Station campus. So we encourage our students to either use their military benefits or find sponsorship through their employer, perhaps. And definitely they can apply for loans, um, go through FAFSA. So those are always options. But you're using a degree plan that is built off of the Master of International Affairs tracks and concentrations. So that's two different tracks in uh, national security and international development. And those concentrations number in excess of about 16 choices of how you can develop your interest. You can also take up to six hours of elective online courses, just knowing that if you do an online option, it's going to about, be about $1,500 more per class. And we can take six hours for that. And then I'm gonna pass this off to Whitney and talk about some of the options in the Washington DC location. Hi everyone, um, my name is Whitney Rains. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at uh, the Bush School DC. We opened up our campus with our first cohort back in uh, January of 2021. And we've admitted for spring, summer, and currently our new fall cohort, um, as Catherine was explaining, we admit all year round for our uh, Master of International Policy. Um, you can do this in one year if you take um, full time, a full load of courses, sorry. Um, a lot of our students up here are working full time in federal government, um, in the agencies, different organizations, or in think tanks on the Hill around DC. Some of them are taking part time or you can go full time. Um, we are pretty flexible with the needs of your career. Um, and like Catherine also said, just, just the same as in College Station, this program is designed for um, mid-career professionals who are working full-time in international affairs. We do require the same um, four years of experience needed, um, no internships. We do not have a capstone requirement or foreign language requirement or a GRE requirement. Um, right now we have a national security track and we have a lot of courses um, to choose from that you can uh, design your degree plan to fit whatever your career needs are. Um, a lot of our students are coming here to um, help grow themselves in their current career or help pivot towards a new career within the federal government, and they all have very different needs. Um, our professors are committed to um, creating classes based on those needs. Um, just like in College Station, up to six elective courses can be taken online. Um, and we do have the occasional, we have scholarships available and more information on that will be posted later um, in the year. Okay, so our brand new degree in DC that we have just launched uh, this September is our Master of National Security Intelligence. We're really excited to be starting our first cohort out in fall 2022. Uh, this degree is designed for early to mid career professionals. So you don't have to have a background in national security or intelligence. Uh, maybe you are pivoting your career um, into the intelligence community. Maybe you have just graduated with your bachelor's degree. Um, this is perfect for someone just starting out wanting to start that career in national security and intelligence. Um, we will have a capstone project requirement um, that will have usually about a group of three to five students who work with a client, um, working with federal agencies, different offices, think tanks, um, and consulting firms within DC. And of course, this can be used on your resume after graduation. Um, Students will be taking classes in intelligence, national security, and our area studies track, and we'll also have the option to take um, different extra, um, different courses from other tracks that are available to them. We don't require internships for national security and intelligence, but they're encouraged, especially if you might not have any background experience in this area, and we will be giving credit for internships. Our career services office will also help students um, find internships around DC, which is a great benefit. Um, and we will also have scholarships available for this degree. Um, like Catherine said earlier, we're also offering their Certificate of Advanced International Affairs. Um, this is a 12 hour certificate. Um, we uh, began taking applications actually in the fall, uh, which is right now, sorry about that, it's September now. Um, this is completed um, on campus right now. Unfortunately, we can't do it online at the moment. Um, so more information about that, you can contact us and we will kind of help you work through that process. So what's really exciting about our DC location is we are right in the middle of downtown DC on L Street, just two blocks from the White House. It's a great location. Um, 
this program up in DC was created for people who are looking to get into national security, intelligence, diplomacy, people who are interested in working in think tanks in the Hill. Um, we have great connections to the different agencies and organizations around DC. Um, and we are in a beautifully newly renovated building, like I said, on L Street. Uh, we have a couple floors of um, 1620 L Street. We have an on-site library and librarian, as well as access to all the digital collections at Texas A&M. We have student lounges, we have great classroom spaces and event spaces as well. So we have plenty of room for students to come, um, especially if you are a full-time student or maybe you can work remotely right now, you can come in and work from our student lounge. We have plenty of students who do that during the day, especially if they need some quiet time away from their office. Um, and we're gonna continue to grow and hire um, more faculty. Uh, we do have our own faculty up here in DC, most of which have experience um, in national security and intelligence. Um, or um, on Capitol Hill. Um, but what's really exciting is because of our location here in DC, we're gonna have opportunities for different conferences. Uh, we just had students who attended the international, um, the Intelligence and National Security Summit that just happened this Monday and Tuesday, and we were able to attend that. It was really exciting. Um, if you're familiar with DC, uh, this is really the first big event anyone's been able to go to, so it was really great. Um, we're also going to have more opportunities for events, including um, different speakers we're going to bring in, um, and also trips to the various agencies, uh, the State Department, the CIA, um, Capitol Hill, and other agencies around the area. We'd like to take our students there for them to get some real insight into what um, it's like to work in those places. Um, and as with any Aggie, you have access to the Aggie Network, and um, we have over 500 alumni. Um, and we have a very strong Aggie uh, alumni network here in DC and they have been so great and they're so excited that we're here. All right, back to me talking about the international policy degree. So specifically here in College Station for this um, four years experience uh, for qualification, we do have both tracks of international development and economic policy and national security and diplomacy. I do believe most people who apply to the MIP are looking at the national security and diplomacy side, but it does uh, provide some additional coursework that if you wanted to mix, let's say, uh, an interest in um, international politics and grand strategy, and in order to um, take those kinds of classes with um, a specialty, you would need to take a number of different courses within that heading. Um, but it, I'll have the curriculum kind of laid out here. This is just meant to show you the amount of depth of kinds of classes that you can pick, including a number of regional studies that we have in the Middle East. We just added Latin America this fall, Europe and China. Um, but our students are be able to put together what they want and what's of interest to them. So no two degree plans have to look the same. And within those different concentrations and tracks, you also have a number of Texas A&M courses. So I had pulled some of the different departments that are listed with their classes, and that could include things like management information systems that goes along with our cybersecurity. And you've got public health that goes along with our international um, affairs and our public health uh, combined degree. You've got statistics, urban planning, economics, accounting. It just runs the gamut, and that's part of why having a association with a huge university like a &M allows you the freedom to take courses within nuclear engineering if that's kind of your um, specialty area. And so the curriculum itself is built out of 10 classes. So it's made to be a one year. Semesters one and two, you've got two required core courses and then you start developing between those tracks and then free electives. So for instance, if you're doing a track course in national security, you probably would pick one of those study areas I had listed there, but then you can take a hodgepodge of courses, maybe something out of a regional study, maybe something else out of one of the development classes. It doesn't have to be anything formulated. It could just be of interest. And then the summer, you would then typically, and I, and I put summer in here because typically most people come in fall, spring, and then a summer, um, but this would just throw this off if you come in off cycle. We offer two courses here in um, 
on campus in College Station, typically terrorism in today's world and deterrence and coercion um, that students can take in residence on that summer courses. Otherwise, again, if they decide that they need to leave um, because they're only stationed here for nine months, they could do the other two courses online. And so there's a mixture of ways you can put this together. And then I'll let um, Whitney talk about the MIP and the NSI in DC. Okay, so currently we're working off the national security and diplomacy track. Um, within that, our areas of study for American diplomacy, foreign policy. Um, a lot of our students are in here um, for intelligence. Uh, we also do counterintelligence, um, the international politics, and the US defense policy, military affairs. Um, for our regional studies, this is something that we are working on building up um, to meet the needs of the students. Currently, we're doing Russia, former Soviet Union, East Asia, Middle East. We just added Europe. Um, we're looking to add uh, more regions, specifically uh, maybe Latin America and Africa within the next semester or so. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Um, so for the MIP and DC, we have two required courses, the 606 and the 608, and then the five courses off the national security track and three electives to go along with that. So basically what you would do is you would sit with an advisor and then based on your um, current career tra trajectory or um, maybe what you're trying to pivot into, we would put together courses that work best for that, including maybe adding a course if you and a few other students also needed that course um, for your job. For the NSI, and again, this is our brand new um, degree that will be uh, our first cohort will be welcomed in in fall 2022. Uh, we will have six core required courses, as you can see there. Um, and then we'll have track electives, um, which will be taken from that intelligence, national security and area studies. Um, and then four additional electives, again, that you can choose based on your needs. We really want to make sure that students up here are getting that foundation of knowledge they need to really thrive um, in whatever career or agency or think tank, or if they're on the Hill, whatever they may need. So when we talk about supporting our students, there's a number of different professional resources that we provide. I try to label the CS being the college station. Sometimes it's both, sometimes it may be just BDC. Um, uniquely for us here in College Station, because we have programs that are built for maybe some of the younger students coming in, in particular our international affairs, we have a leadership program that is essentially just trying to get to how students work with each other and understanding their own ways of learning so that you can have your Briggs Myers, Myers Briggs assessments, you can do your strengths. Uh, we work in groups a lot. So understanding how you can work together through your strengths in assignments when you're doing these group projects helps our younger students a lot. Sometimes our MIP students don't need these resources because they've already done something similar through their uh, employment or the military. And that's okay because they're elective, so they don't have to participate in those. But just talking about that briefly, those are through courses and workshops. We're also doing internship and reflections on those internships. They're also getting involved in the different student organizations here. And then, like we said, the self-assessments and development plans, working with Holly Casper Bauer, who runs that leadership program here for us. The writing program specifically here in College Station is another faculty, sorry, faculty slash staff person who is working with e-profiles. So they're working electronic means of gathering reflections, developing a website for yourself, putting together different briefing reports and memos and uh, samples of your work because these students oftentimes are young and they haven't built any of those networking pieces that you acquire through time to share in an interview, maybe for an employment. And so working with our writing program provides opportunities for them to gain some of those necessary pieces and those interactions with other professionals. Um, I did notice the DC is also providing writing services uh, via one-on-one -on -one appointments for their students. So it's a little bit different capacity, but you are receiving help here. You're not just coming into a professional program and trying to figure it out. So you can schedule some appointments in, in both campuses in getting some help um, when that's needed or attending different workshops. The language resources, 
I don't know, Whitney may be able to talk about what might be provided there in DC, but for us, because the international affairs has a language component, even though our MIP does not, we provide Rosetta Stone free of charge to any student um, that asks for it. So we provide that to our Master of Public Service, our Master of International Policy. And if they want to work on that language and take the test on it, which we use American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, then they are able to set up that test through Professor Olson, uh, who's pictured here on this slide, um, and get that test taken so they can have that credential on their resume. We also have language practice groups uh, that are meeting weekly. And sometimes there are tutors that are hired for specific languages when they need a little more help. So again, while the MIP doesn't have this language component, we still have the resources here to help those students. Whitney, I don't know if you wanna unmute for a second. Do you know what resources that you have for the NSI students there in DC? Yes, we'll be offering Rosetta Stone. Great. Okay, so that provides opportunities for those students um, to work on that language because language is going to be all outside of the classroom attainment. It's not built into part of your curriculum. The speakers and conferences is going to be relevant to both campuses. Visiting faculty, alumni, national regional speakers, different conferences. I know there are two in particular that we typically hold every fall here in College Station. One deals with pandemics, which has been highly irre uh, relevant lately. And the other one has been uh, the women um, in security issues. And so you're just going to have a plethora of chances to go in and visit um, and learn more and network. And there's just no other opportunity in your life with, except maybe living in DC and having some time after work to do these. But sometimes these speakers are coming in during the day and we've built that time in during the day to go see these speakers here in College Station. Again, international travel can be a, a big component of someone who comes into a program for international affairs. And so we have trips that are usually taken each May, hasn't happened recently, um, but we're hoping to get that back on track. Usually a, a trip to China is every other year. And we've included places like Germany, Italy, India, Egypt um, in our most recent trips. And then there are also a number of reciprocal exchanges where our students can go abroad um, to different countries and maybe spend a semester there. Again, more relevant to our international affairs, but it's things like this that our national security and intelligence in DC will grow into um, in time. They just need a little more getting steady um, setups. And then here in College Station, we also have a number of institutes, centers, and programs. So I've listed some of them there. One of the ones that people ask all the time is the intelligence studies program. This isn't necessarily a program that people can join or get part of. What it means is that we have a concentration area of interest that are supported by a number of faculty who often will hold a number of different uh, speaking events, panels, and that where students who are interested in intelligence are really gonna be able to find out more and network at those kind of events. We're building one in the Middle East and the cyber policy is one of our newest as well. But the Albritton Center for Grand Strategy, the Scowcroft Institute, they're always bringing in guest speakers and holding a number of different um, research opportunities sometimes for our students. So it really just enhances the educational opportunities here. And then I had added even a couple more, the library. Students have access to Texas A&M digital and library collections, which numbers in the hundreds of thousands. There's also an interlibrary loans and document delivery that people can use so many times our students aren't having to buy books, they're utilizing the library resources and e-reserves that our faculty have put off to the side and can have those delivered sometimes directly to their inbox uh, through email. But you just, again, having that association with Texas A&M University and just all that it means with it, you will have an extensive uh, ability to research uh, from the library um, resources. And then internship and career support, I didn't wanna to forget to talk about the workshops that we offer, particular here in College Station. Marilyn holds a, a number, probably six to 10 different workshops with different topics from building your LinkedIn profile to how to interview, how to negotiate for higher salaries, all kinds of opportunities that are elective to a point. Um, you can attend the ones that are of interest to you, 
If you end up receiving an internship with no pay for those that are in our international affairs, then they could receive some internship funding by attending at least six of those workshops. So again, sometimes our MIP students don't need this, but they're there if they want to attend them. They also hold that one-on-one -on -one career advising um, where you can go in and have them look at cover letters and talk to you about resources and outreach to alumni who might be in an area of your interest. So we have three staff here in College Station. I know the DC has started now with one staff member who is dedicated to that career and, and employment. And I'm sure that that will expand over time. Um, internships for the NSI students, you have an ability potentially to have credit for yours. Um, we don't have that option here on the College Station campus. And just to talk briefly, because my next slides will highlight some of the job career paths, yearly employment rates within six months of graduation are some of the strongest of the APSIA schools. So if you're not familiar with APSIA, it's the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs. That's APSIA.org. And APSIA are some of our top programs. And we compare stats at six months out to gauge how our students are doing in that employment search. And yearly, we're pretty solid. The only reason it's not above 90% is because so many of our students are heading into federal government jobs that require security clearances that may not have cleared within that six month time frame, And so if it's at seven or eight months before they get into that job, then they don't get counted um, into these numbers yet. So even at a year out, it'd be even higher. So just talking briefly, I'm not gonna read off all of these, but the career sectors and employers for these international affairs related degrees are very consistent in the types of agencies and organizations that our students go into. So a lot of them are heading to federal government, um, sometimes with the military. I didn't list a lot of the military on here because they're kind of a niche uh, area, but you've got the CIA, FBI, USA, US Drug Enforcement Agency, just runs um, across all of these three letter acronyms. You've got government contractors. Um, a number of our students are heading into that world, especially our younger students who may not have an ability to break into some of those federal government jobs until they get some experience. Um, but again, it's relevant to the MIP as well. The private industry sometimes hits on those same ones for the contracting, state and local government, nonprofits. Those last two aren't as big, um, but there are students who do stay within the state of Texas or who work with at the Texas, um, sorry, or the Maryland or Virginia or Wisconsin or where it is they're coming from at the local government maybe an emergency management or homeland security. And then you've got a few that are heading into nonprofits that that's primarily more of a think tank kind of uh, entity or international NGOs has been a, a few year, uh, people every year as well. So just to talk about briefly, um, I know there's a question here that says, I would like to know the case of international students and the possible career and job opportunities in the US. So Albert, just really quickly to answer that question, um, job opportunities for international students, at least in the College Station campus, is a lot about networking and where you're trying to be um, once you're done with your degree. At the executive level, many times those international students are coming in either sponsored by their country or they're going back to their home country. There's not a lot that are here trying to find some kind of federal level government job and gonna be successful in that unless they have some networks they've developed. So there's a few. Um, I don't know if Whitney has enough to talk about anything on that on her end um, with employment because their students haven't graduated yet. Um, but Whitney, if you do, you can put something in the uh, chat section for that, um, for comment. To move on to the application steps, I've got one more slide for this before I pass it on. Um, but we're looking at the Master of International Policy here in College Station, that rolling admissions means that we have a number of different deadlines. Now, there is a little bit of wiggle room on these, but for instance, with the spring start coming up, that deadline's coming up next month. So October 15th, we have to get applications in to process those. Someone who's coming in for summer, they have until March 15th. And our typical bigger goal is for fall, and that's typically April 15th. 
However, we did keep that open until August 1st this year, just to try to enhance some additional um, enrollment. And those classes are small for us. So the MIP last year brought in six in the fall and six in the spring. This year we brought in five for the fall and we anticipate somewhere between three to five in the spring. So we're looking smaller probably than what DC is looking for theirs um, and that's okay, but we're working one-on-one -on -one with these with the turnaround of between a week to two weeks uh, business days to get a review after your uh, materials are submitted. And you can find all that information on our website under admissions and then go to the degree section and you can find the MIP. So now Whitney will talk about the DC deadlines for their programs. So we have priority deadlines and for the DC uh, campus, that means that this is when we would like you to get your application in for uh, priority consideration, meaning we want to have enough time to, for you to get all of your materials into us and for us to get you an admissions decision pretty quickly. Um, however, if you apply after the priority deadline, um, as you can see on the screen, it says we continue to accept applicants on a rolling basis until the class is filled. Uh, this is really because we try to be as flexible as possible in DC because a lot of our students find out that they can in fact take classes um, at the last minute sometimes. Maybe they find out they're not gonna get deployed. Maybe they find out they have some opening in their afternoons at their job. Um, so we try to be flexible with everyone. We just like to have these guidelines again to make sure that we can get your application process, all of your documents and get you enrolled, get, you know, look at financial aid if you need to. Um, and for the new NSI degree, um, that priority deadline is gonna be February 1. Uh, we are right now only accepting applications for fall 2022. Um, and for the CAIA um, um, here in DC, our certificate, uh, just contact us. We'll also be accepting on a rolling basis with us. Uh, again, we'll be flexible with that and try to get you in before the semester starts um, in fall, spring, and summer. For the MIP and NSA app requirements in DC, it's going to work um, the same as it does in College Station for the MIP, you must have that five year, four, sorry, four years of professional international experience. Um, you'll apply using our GradCast, pay that app fee, upload unofficial transcripts to the applicant portal to put in the contact information for two recommenders, your resume, your statement of purpose, GRE, if you would like, if you have questions about, if you think you need to send us a GRE, you can always contact us. Um, so yeah, and for the NSI, of course, you don't have to have that four years of, of experience. But if you have any questions about the application process, we very regularly sit down with students before they start filling it out, and we'll go through the process with them. So to talk about our numbers, just in case you're curious, I mentioned a minute ago that the MIP was around that five to six that we're looking for. Um, average GPA and GRE is a little skewed because the numbers are so small. And this year, those that did submit a GRE, because it is optional, um, they submitted high ones. So our average out of three of the five students was a 324. It's typically closer to about that 303 to 308 mark. Um, GPA looks pretty strong. Um, same thing, average age, look at the difference between the MIA and the MIP. Uh, because it is more of an executive level with that four years of experience, many times these are going to be students who are coming back, um, at least here in College Station. Just remember, um, this isn't a destiny <laughs> destination point like it is for DC. So if they are coming here, it's usually because they're assigned here or want to come here for the year, uh, get in, get out, and move on. So many of our students are military. Uh, so average age was 35. Women represented 20% of that incoming class. Non-residents was 80%. And then 100% for average work experience was over five years for those five or six students. Um, but our classes, you're learning from professors from both practitioners and researchers in a very small classroom. Um, most of our classrooms here are boardroom style. So you're sitting around a big table um, that averages anywhere between 10 to 20 students on, on average. Um, some classes do get pushed up to about 25 students, but you rarely see them that big. So a lot of interaction, a lot of readings, and coming back and having discussions the next days for those. And then as far as costs and benefits, I kind of combined both mine and Whitney's on this one. Um, the MIP specifically, the cost in College Station, because there was a reminder 
we don't provide scholarships for our students under the College Station campus. There may be some available um, on the DC, but our cost is if a person's coming in for one year to take this, it is roughly 16,500 to complete the tuition and fees for those 10 courses. If someone comes in as a non-resident or an international student, because we're not offering scholarships to give them those non-resident waivers like we do in the international affairs degree, it means they have to pay that non-resident cost, which is running at 31,800 right now. The MIP and the National Security and Intelligence new degree, those costs are based on a 3,900 per course. Um, so MIP with 10 courses is about 39,000. NSI with 14 courses is running about 54,600. So a little bit of a difference depending on where you're coming from um, versus a Texas resident, it's you know, a little under 17,000 up to maybe 55,000 for a different degree, a little bit longer. But the affordability is built into, it's a one-year cost. So you get in and you get out and back to your life and hopefully you can apply for outside scholarships. I will say that that acronym I gave earlier with APSIA.org, APSIA, A-P-S-I-A dot org, has a number of different scholarships um, that are listed on their uh, website that you can go to and search to see what you might be qualified for and apply to. Just know that many of them are national, and so there's a lot of people applying for them, and they may only have a couple of opportunities. Um, also, use your military benefits if you can. Ask about job financial support. You can submit FAFSA uh, qualifications and try to get loans and grants. There is one in particular here on, in Texas A&M that is the Texas Aggie Graduate Grant that is good for several thousand dollars each semester that is completely done through financial aid, not us. So there are some opportunities, just not as robust as what we have with our other programs. So having said all that, um, I'll try to come back. Whitney, before I go into Shaysha talking, did you want to talk anything else about tuition or add anything? Yeah, I did. You know, I the Bush School is very committed to providing, you know, affordable education for those looking to get in public service. And in D.C., we do have that flat $3,900 rate per three-hour course. Um, and we do that to ensure that students are, um, they know what they're going to pay, especially up here in the DMV. We have students coming in from three different states often. Um, so our fee, um, of course, we do, is a program fee for M MIP and NSI. We do not consider residency. Um, as College Station does because they can, they are in Texas, so they do charge for Texas residents and non-residents. So um, up here, like I said, we do a program fee rather than looking at residency. We find it's been easier for our students. Um, and we are considerably more affordable than our peer institutions here in the, uh, the DMV and in the district. Uh, so we're hoping that to provide people who are living in this area with a very affordable option. Um, and so far, our students have agreed with us and they believe it is more affordable for them. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there if anyone is familiar with the cost of education up here in the district. I appreciate that because I do forget sometimes being here in College Station, just how expensive many of the international affairs programs are in the DC area where it might be 28,000 a semester. And you know, here you can do a whole degree for a fraction of that cost. So definitely we have some affordability. It just depends on where you wanna be and what you're looking for in terms of the type of degree. Okay, so I wanted to spend at least a few minutes having a student perspective. So I've asked Captain Ferguson to come on and just give us a little bit about her um, background and where she's from, former studies, work service. Um, so if you wanna take it away and introduce yourself, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Can you hear me? All yes. right. Can you hear me? Yes. 
All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is um, Captain Ferguson Sha'asha. I'm a MIP student here at the Bush School. Um, so I entered here in January um, during COVID, <laughs> did an interview, did an essay, and I loved it. Um, I've been in the military for 10 years. Um, I'm in the Army as a captain, and they offered me this opportunity, so I decided to seize it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I graduate May uh, 2022, and I have a track of national security. Um, one good thing that I love about A&M as far as the guest speakers and student service interactions, I mean, it goes countless with the topics that are going on. I've attended several seminars in terms to Mexico, what's going on in the border, as well as just last week, 9-11, we had a panel discussion where most of our Intel professors was able to express to the students, faculty, and others their experience during 9-11 and also, you know, future counterterrorism and what is going on in today's world. As far as classes, so I do <laughs> want to say the classes here are a challenge. Get ready to write, write, write. A lot of academic papers coming from the military. I highly recommend that you use the Writing Center. So the Writing Center was my best friend. They helped me out a lot. Um, but just get ready to write a lot of academic papers. But the good thing that I like about the Bush School is most of the classes for MIP included class discussions. So you're not just hearing the professor get up and talk, you're actually participating in lectures and discussions with your classes because we all have different experiences and different knowledge and backgrounds to bring to the table. So that, that helped me out a lot. Um, right now I'm taking a terrorism in today's world and I love it, it's with uh, Professor Howe and we're talking about um, terrorism today's world, exactly what's going on in Afghanistan. I've also taken American foreign policy, which, you know, it goes over the Cold War. For the fun stuff, school environment in the community. So I am a part of the Black Graduate Student Association. I'm also a member of the Senator Board where we bring all of the students' concerns and we vote on the committee. I'm a part of the Red Cross. Um, I love the gym, so the, the rec center is my favorite place to be. <laughs> and here at Texas A&M, everyone loves the gym. There's a ton of people that are at the gym. So if you wanna get involved, um, definitely want to, to know that the gym is a, a great place to be as well as um, the rec center. Um, some advice that I have to offer, if I leave you with nothing else, I will say this. Um, do not leave the Bush School without building uh, relationships. I've noticed that here, um, there are some people that are going into uh, different agencies, like the presenters mentioned today, CIA, um, NSA, uh, going to DC to do these great things. You wanna make sure that you have their phone numbers and you keep in touch with them because you never know who you may need. So though I'm in the military, we all work together and I know that I will see these guys um, in the future. And last but not least, I would just say, um, I've seen several internship opportunities come up for the summertime. And if you could participate in an internship, I highly, highly recommend that you participate because a lot of the jobs that I see my peers are looking for are really looking for that experience. So I leave you with those two um, knowledge pieces and advice, and I appreciate um, just giving my perspective of being in the MIP program, and I hope I see you here soon. Thank you. No, thank you. We appreciate your time. And, and I know I'm trying to be mindful of time, too. We've got about 15 minutes left. So if there are some questions that anyone wants to unmute and ask it, or if they want to put it into the chat section, we will wait for a few minutes. I'm gonna move my slide and at least put our information here on how to research us, how to get a hold of us. I'm found at that Bush School Admissions address and the phone number reaches either Ashley or myself here in the College Station. And then the Bush School DC um, email will be reaching Whitney and she is happy to answer questions about their programs. So having said that, are there anybody who would like to unmute?
and ask a question. I don't want to put too much dead time here. I know we can always get off early. Yes, ma'am. So, I have a question really quick if you don't mind. Okay, Cameron, what do you have? So how does this compare to the normal international affairs degree when it comes to marketability with um, different companies and stuff like that? So you're asking about marketability of the MIP or the MNSI compared to the Master of International Affairs? Yes, ma'am. So I will say that normally the students coming in for the MIP are coming in with a number of years of experience, but maybe they're switching fields or growing within their fields. And so they're not needing as much support from us in terms of that networking. It's great. They can, just like Aisha just said, she's taking down numbers and, and taking advantage of all that networking um, because you can use it. Um, but the elements of this is not to make everything required. They don't have to do the internship. They don't have to do the capstone because they already have that real life experience that our younger students don't yet. Many of them for the international affairs are coming in with zero to three or four years of experience. Some of them already missed that chance to travel. They didn't get that because of COVID. They didn't get their internship except for maybe an online opportunity. So they're using the ability to network and do a required internship and the capstone. And it's a larger program. For that MIA, we brought in 85 students compared to six. So even though you're sitting in the same classes here, at least in College Station, you are in that same classroom, whether it's MIP or MIA or MIA MPH, they're all together. Um, you're just getting a lot more touch points um, in building who you are and that professional experience, those insights, the writing um, that sometimes our MIP students don't need. So I think that's the biggest part. Okay, thank you. I see a question from Albert about STEM designation to any of these degrees. No, I don't believe any of these have that. I know our cyber has a little bit more um, technical sometimes, uh, depending on the approach, but we're more of a policy emphasis. Um, so it's meant for people who aren't techie um, necessarily for that degree or emphasis. Anybody else with questions? We're happy to help with this. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna roll to my next slide. And just as a reminder, if you come up with other questions for us, as an example, we're running Zoom Q&A hours every other week. So I actually have a Zoom Q&A tomorrow that's a drop-in from 11 o'clock uh, to 12 o'clock Central Time um, that are listed on our website under the calendar. And you can come in and just chat with us for an hour. Um, sometimes people just come in and listen and just hear what other people are asking and then that'll spur their question. We've got other online events. We just did a idealist fair yesterday. Um, we've got other events coming up next week and the week after that you can also find on our website under the calendar. Um, I've got additional webinars coming up to talk about student life. Um, those are be more about the Master of International Affairs and Master of Public Service. The admissions is gonna cover a little bit of everything, uh, but we'll get some more insight on recommendations and cover letters and how to make yourself more marketable um, and approachable for our faculty how to get ready for the interviews uh, for the MIA and MPSA. Career, Matt Upton will come in from his office and talk about um, the aspects that they do with the students. Uh, Co-curricular would be a little bit of everything outside the classroom. And then the financial aid will be some websites and helpful information about how to be competitive for, nan for financial aid here. And then I'll start open houses in um, October. So for anyone who finds themselves in Bryan College Station, maybe for a football game, which are pretty big here, um, we've got um, a number of opportunities for some open houses that you can drop in and maybe even go hang out with our students at tailgating. They've got a tailgating committee here uh, that sets those up along with intramurals and all kinds of fun things. We're not just all about the classroom. It's also about getting to uh, relax and have fun with your friends too. So. That being has said, I've got about another 30 seconds. Anybody have anything else that they have thought of? And then Whitney, I'll give you a chance to kind of close out too if you have any parting comments. Um, anybody at all can unmute and talk.
And Albert, thank you for your time too. Hope this was helpful. We appreciate you coming today. All right, Whitney, do you wanna have any parting words for us? Yeah, we're just really excited to be up here in DC, you know, representing the Bush School in Texas A&M. It really means a lot to all of us. Um, and all the Bush School alumni that are up here too, you know, they can come, come to the campus and feel a little closer to home. Um, so if any of you have any questions, as Catherine said, I'm just gonna echo what she said. Uh, please reach out to me, that email and phone number, as she said earlier, that connects directly to me. We're always happy to give a tour if you're in the area to get on a Zoom call, a phone call, whatever you need. We're here for you guys. And we're um, excited to meet you if you are interested in any of our degrees in DC or in College Station. Wonderful. I can't wait to get a chance to get up there and get a tour and meet you guys and, and have kind of a place to go see. Um, I, I love the fact that you have a ground floor access with all the Aggie um, information out there for us. So anybody yes. has a chance, go drop by and go visit them. Come here at College Station and see us. In the meantime, um, thank you guys for your time. We're going to wrap it up. We appreciate you. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, everyone.